welcome back, everyone, to episode nine of the PMB Show. My name is Preston Sibley, joined with my co-host, Benjamin Ramsey. And today our guest is Dusty from uh, The Amazing Race Season 33. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. How are you guys? I'm good. Wonderful. So, well, Dusty, like yeah. So, Dusty, I want to jump right in and ask you uh, what made you want to apply to be on the show? You know, I was kind of in an interesting uh, situation here with my partner, Ryan Ferguson. Um, as you guys know, this cast is a little bit different than a lot of casts. Um, there's a lot of backstories yeah. within the cast and people that have done amazing things. And so one, I'm very blessed that I got to meet these people. But two, Ryan was actually approached by the show um, to compete on season 33 of The Amazing Race. And uh, mm-hmm. when he reached out to me, I really, I'll be honest with you, I thought he was kidding. And, um, you know, once I got <laughs> The whole story of it and everything that this was really happening uh he was actually going to go with his father bill ferguson shout out bill happy late birthday it was his birthday yesterday um and so his dad had hip replacement surgery and so that opened the door and he called oh. me very early one morning and was like hey i need you to take a month of work off We're about the caliban <laughs> the planet and uh so i'm like what in the hell mm-hmm. are you doing this, dude and he broke the, <laughs> the amazing race had called and uh, I told him straight up, let's go bags packed. We can get this done. That's, that's crazy. Um, same with Raquel. Like she, the amazing race reached out to her, right? Um, yeah, I believe so. yeah. Yeah. So what was the strategy before you guys had left, like preparation, anything like that? So, I mean, you know, physicality, we knew it was going to present itself. And Ryan and I are pretty, you know, adamant in the physical department. We both put a ton of work in um, and, you know, Mm -hmm. enjoy hiking and doing those kind of things. But really, I mean, we knew this was going to be a mental challenge. Um, You know, it's a grind. Everyone that watches it, it's very easy to watch from the couch and say what you do until the cameras are on. I assure you, Uh, it's crazy. And so especially, you know, the second time coming back after COVID, the first time it was race, rest, race, rest. And so Mm -hmm. I think I can speak for the whole cast, how mentally pushed we were coming back after COVID after 19 months and having to wait in hotel rooms for days on end. And so it was really working puzzles, anything to just get mentally sharp. Um, We talked a lot about how we wanted to communicate with each other, because I believe that is the like unwritten rule of the amazing race. When things go south, you want me talking? Do you not not want me talking? And so Ryan and I laid out guidelines with that. You know, I'm way more emotional than Ryan, as I think all of you can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I like the hooting and hollering, whereas Ryan is a very Zen individual, you know, he's had a lot of experience with other things been through. And, you know, for him, it was like, you know, just let me do my thing here and there. You can give me, you got it. Um, but, you know, so yeah. it was just a lot of communication on what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do I need to work on? What can't you do if it presents itself? And so we were very strategic and, you know, when you have 19 months to talk and plan, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even know if it was going to happen again, but yeah. you know, fortunately we were ready. I feel, um, I, you know, I don't know what else I would do different. You know, if I did it again, I feel like we put the work in, we just didn't capitalize when we needed to. Yeah. You guys did amazing. And, uh, placing third out of everyone, um, and strategy and communication is everything that you need for a show like this and a race like this. What, what was different about this season was that you guys were actually starting from your homes. We got a message. All oh, right. Um, what was that like instead of like flying and then starting there? So uh, a very cool experience on, uh, you know, season 33 of The Amazing Race to get to start from, you know, it was my home actually in Columbia, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan and I, that is where we grew up. At the time, he was living in St. Louis, so he came down. We started it off in Columbia. It was a very neat experience to get to, you know, spend those last few minutes with my family, with Ryan's family, and, uh, you know, it's it was very strange. Uh, you know, you felt like the race was starting there, but you just really didn't know, and so it was an ordeal, uh, and it's crazy, you know, after we returned after COVID, my wife and I, we moved <laughs> to, across the yeah. country to Colorado, and so... It was very interesting seeing my house that I just finished remodeling on television for a brief second. Um, yeah. It was really cool to get to do that, to leave, you know, where we grew up together. And uh, even if it was for a brief moment, we weren't there long. Mm-hmm. It was a great experience to do so. And so I really enjoyed that part of it. It was, you know, we kind of got to talk mm-hmm. a little bit on the ride to St. Louis before we flew out and uh, just as much planning time as you can have in something like this. I think it's important. Yeah. So now what was your, your first, um, a- opinion about the cast when you first met them like i I'm, i think you guys met arun and natalia first right well we did yeah so interesting who we met first we met arun and natalia and we also met mike and mo the singing cops and so yeah. 
emotions are high. The first people you see, you know, I'm sure every other team did this. Yeah, we're going to run together. We're going to do this. You know, we, we got your back. You know, I hope you have ours. And uh, it, it was interesting. Yeah. You know, I knew who the singing cops were just from all of the publicity that they've had. But then, you know, you get to meet Arun and Natalia and it was, uh, okay, there are some other people on here that are somewhat normal. Yeah. But it was a bit reassuring. Um, it was just interesting to get a taste. And, you know, when we went through casting and everything, they, these were two teams I don't think I ever saw. And so, you know, it was my first time getting a glimpse at, okay, here's who we're up against. Uh, you see Mike, who's very intimidating. Um, yeah. You just don't know what to expect. And the race is just so humbling. It doesn't matter if you're big, strong, you look mm -hmm. intelligent, something is going to, you know, expose you at some point. And so, man, it was, uh, it was crazy. You know, you finally see some people and I'm like, who the hell else are we going to be against? I, you know, there's a lot yeah. of in that room at the beginning than just this. And so it was good. I mean, you, you knew the clock was ticking then it's, it's starting to get real. Yeah. And that's something I've mentioned um, to the other contestants when I spoke to them was everyone, and you said it yourself, everyone had a unique story this season and uh, Arun had said, like, between Raquel and Kayla and the two of them, they were, like, the only normal people there, right? That, yeah. I mean, Ryan had a, a wicked story that shocked all of us when we saw it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Can we talk about that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. I, Do you want to elaborate on what I know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Know, I'll tell you. Do you want to go ahead and just give the viewers a little bit of background? What's the relationship here? Childhood friends since oh, friends. 24 yep. years, roughly. Oh. When I was 19, I was leaving school. I was surrounded by a SWAT team. They arrested me for murder of a person that I had never seen, that I had never talked to. I thought, OK, you're going to interrogate me, see I wasn't there, and then I'm going to go home and take midterms. I didn't go home for a decade. The fact that Dusty stuck by me that whole time was the most incredible thing I can imagine. It was a no-brainer for me. He's like my brother. We could not be more excited to run the race. It's an opportunity to make up for lost time. Yeah, absolutely. So Ryan Ferguson, um, he's one of my childhood best friends. We grew, or grew up in Columbia, Missouri together. And um, I had left for college. I'm a year older than Ryan. And I just started getting a whole bunch of phone calls one evening. Um, I'll never forget it was a Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. So I finally answer one. And I had been informed that Ryan... And another kid that we went to school with, Chuck Erickson, had been incarcerated for the murder of the sports editor of the Columbia Tribune in my hometown. And this murder was a couple years prior to this. And so, you know, it's bewilderment and it's immediately like, I mean, there's no way that this can happen. And so long story short, Ryan was wrongfully convicted um, and did 10 years of, I believe, a 40 year sentence for something that he had nothing to do with. Yeah. Um, and then luckily, by the grace of God, his father kept fighting Bill Ferguson. And I, I strongly suggest everyone out there check out the documentary on Netflix. It's called Dream Killer. It is Ryan Ferguson. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, definitely check it out. He's also had a television show on MTV called Unlocking the Truth. But mm -hmm. the documentary is more about his story. So Ryan did 10 years wow. for someone basically having a dream and saying, if I did this, I'm pretty sure Ryan was with me. Um, yeah. Yeah police coerced the the other kid it's just a bad case of the criminal justice system failing someone mm -hmm. and i was so blessed that bill fought and that they you know received the help from kathleen zellner who's an amazing attorney out of chicago mm -hmm. to prove mm -hmm. ryan's innocence with dna i mean it was it was just blat blatantly overlooked and they took 10 years of my best friend's life for absolutely nothing and so that's his story um when you watch the show i mean i just hope people realize how amazing of a person this guy is for what he's been through yeah it's, like I said, there's no one else I can do it with. He's about the only person in the world that can control me. So <laughs> that's Ryan's story. Um, he's an unbelievable person who went through hell and back and is the same, if not better person on the other side mm -hmm. of it. And he's fighting for the rights of everyone and just what he's doing. And one last plug for Ryan, you guys all need to check out his podcast. It's on yeah. Apple and Spotify. It's called Prison Counts. It's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Again, bringing voice and reason to the justice system and really what goes on behind closed bars. So yeah, that's Ryan's story in a quick nutshell. <laughs> that's, it's mind blowing to see that something happened. Like, as he mentioned on the show, okay, he thought he was going to get interrogated and be back to, to studying that night or whatever and didn't yeah. go home for a decade, right? Unbelievable. That, it, that's crazy. Um, okay, so back into the race. So you guys left your home and then you were off to London, basically where you were starting. Now, had you have you been to London in the past, or was that your first time? 
So me personally, I have not been to London, but I was very fortunate that Ryan has spent a decent amount of time there. Um, and so if you notice in the first leg, everyone's taking cabs and this and that, Ryan and I were running the whole city. Oh, yeah. I mean, we didn't know if we could spend our money or not. And so, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to travel, just not there. And so, you know, what a crazy place to start the season 33 of the amazing race. And uh, yeah. you know, I definitely felt good knowing that Ryan knew his way around somewhere. Right? And he, you know, he's Magellan. I think I said it a million times. Uh, mm-hmm. I've never met anyone that can navigate a normal map. <laughs> yeah, so, no. yeah, very eye-opening across the pond. I'm like, here we go. Yeah. Now, speaking of um, like you were talking about cabs and stuff, would you, uh, something I like to ask is public transportation compared to your, your private transportation, like after you guys came back, would you have preferred just to keep it public or did you like the private? Guys, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, self-navigating all over the world is no <laughs> I think I speak for Ryan and I both though. I mean, taking a cab is nice, but I would rather have fate in my own hands, especially when you have someone like Ryan who can navigate as well as he can. Um, Mm. Either way, I mean, we would have been down for the, you know, the challenge or whatever we've been, but I mean, looking back on it uh, while I'm doing it, I hated self-driving just because it's just so nerve wracking. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would change it because again, like if you get one bad cab driver who gets lost, I'd rather it be on me than my fate be in someone else's hands. Um, yeah. I think I would take self-driving though. It is way harder and a nightmare and you just don't know the stress it brings on you. It is insane. Mm-hmm. Like one wrong turn. You're like, it's my fault. And so, but I would rather have that than my cabbie missed the turn. And then Ryan and I are going ballistic in the backseat at someone that had really no <laughs> doing or getting. Himself yeah. So I'd, I'll take self-driving. Yeah. Now, what was your strength and weakness? I know you had to give a few or whatever to the producers. So, I mean, really my personal strengths were, I'm a guy who does, a, gets into a lot of hobbies. Uh, at the mm-hmm. same token on that, I get burned out on a lot of hobbies very quickly. Mm-hmm. So with, you know, in the amazing race world, that's actually a good thing because I like immersed myself in so many different things. I felt like I was kind of a jack of all trades. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be the first one to tell you I wasn't excited about puzzles or dancing or singing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so really one of my favorite challenges we got through was the flag spinning in Switzerland to be yeah. the whole this family at a performance felt pretty good, but really strength. Um, we always felt like to any detour, as long as both of us were in there, we could get through anything together. Um, the one things that really worried me, I'll tell you my weaknesses would be anything to where you don't have an opportunity to improve on. Um, mm-hmm. I'll be out of luck. Uh, and I think we saw that in episode nine in Greece. Mm-hmm. Um, it's my biggest fear, <laughs> like getting yeah. into something that I have no control over. And it's just, you know, I hope I find this. Um, it was my biggest fear the whole time in the back of my head. I was like, there's going to be a needle in the haystack challenge. Where is it going to be? Mm-hmm. You know, once I pull the card, you know, I'm thinking, Oh, Greece rocks. We're going to be lifting big things. Perfect for me. Yeah. Um, you're flipping so, them. <laughs> I mean, a strong yeah. weakness of mine, you guys will see, is it's just when things go to hell, I'm the one of the two that can get a little sporadic on that. Um, yeah. Our motto was always go at 70%, eat an elephant one bite at a time. And I felt like any time that we got away from that, i.e. the cheese, um, and then the elevators at the end where panic starts kicking in and we're looking around, we're the only ones there, all hell always broke loose. So if we stayed calm, cool, and collected, the boat sailed a little easier. But with me... A little easier said than done. Ryan yeah. is cooler than a polar bear's toenails all the time. So, you know, um, yeah. but I think I rub off on him when he needs to get going a little bit too. And so he just has to deal with my craziness and, you know, it picks him up sometimes here and there. Yeah. Now, as we were just talking about the rocks, which we'll, we'll talk more about later. Um, I feel like anytime you guys got like, you got stumped or you, you struggled a little bit, you had like a perfect message to like, keep going. Right. Like, especially for the rocks like you just thought about your son and you're like, I, I need to do this. Right. Um, but I mean, there was no way of getting around that. Like they're everywhere. So Ben, what do you think so far? Any questions? Let's see. Um, I mean, so you just like ran through London pretty much. Yeah. Till the very end, we had to catch a cab to the museum on the first leg, but Ryan yeah. and I ran the whole leg. Mm-hmm. And we just didn't have a cab outside. And so Spencer and Anthony saved their cab on the ride over. And looking back on it, I should, we should have taken it. But we were like, you know what? We feel like we're in the front. <laughs> and our yeah. goal in the first leg, you know, we didn't even know. You have no idea where you're at. You know, I couldn't no. last. I was like, let's just get there at all you, costs. And so. 
yeah. second place was great. I was, you know, 10th would have been just fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably would have been the same way, honestly. Like, I would have just been like, uh, yeah, I can just. It's your biggest fear. Just, if you know. Places. Yeah. I, I once I, once I was in London um, quite a few years back, but now that I, I kind of remember where everything is, if I were to have to go, I think I would do the same. I would just signs, people, whatever. I'll get myself there. I'm not going to get stuck in traffic or, or get eliminated because of that. Right. Or because of like yeah. a bad driver or something. You learn a yeah. lot first leg too in tricks. Like, you know, the first group of people we run up to, to get direct and there's 20 of them. Well, you got to fill paperwork out of the people, you know? So like the first leg is chaos and something they didn't show. And I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk about this. Like when we started in London, literally the mm-hmm. whole cast tripped over themselves. They didn't put it on there. And so I'm like, what in the hell have I got myself into? It oh, like hard. when you all, when you all started running. Oh, like all of us ate it. I mean, I tried. Oh, to I, I figured, people, yeah. You know, even even when that. you guys came back, it, when you guys ran that corner or something like that, I'm like, that was nobody falling, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I dodged a bullet that time almost, but save mm-hmm. save place that time. Yeah, when when you guys run up to the the guy in the phone booth where I see people jumping over walls and stuff, and then the, the girls are running around. They're like, "How did you guys do that?" I'm like, "I would have done it if I had to, right? It's whoever can get there first. It's amazing yeah. what this race will make you do. Like mm-hmm. bungee jumping, uh-uh. You couldn't pay me to do it. But <laughs> no. when the camera's on your face and your friends are licking their chops ready to make fun of you, you just got to get it done. Mm-hmm. My no. biggest fear I was going to have to come yeah. home to, my friends were just like, I hope you lose so bad. Like, <laughs> Great, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Now, a question um, that I've asked previously is, fatigue level after the first race. From what everyone else is saying, nobody was prepared to do that much running. And from you... You guys did the most running, it looks like. How are you guys feeling after the first leg? You know, there was so much adrenaline that pretty good, actually. And I mean, we literally ran all of London. Um, but your adrenaline's going, you know, when a camera's going. I was very blessed to have Ryan with me, who's been in front of a camera, you know, multiple times through yeah. different things. And so I felt good. Uh, the first few legs, I mean, it's just it was go, go, go. There was no time to be tired. Whereas, you know, the second time around when you come back, there's so much resting due to COVID testing, which I totally respect. And my hat's off to the amazing race and CBS for keeping, you know, no one got sick. 100%. Unprecedented. Um, and so second time through, when you get to sit around a little bit, your legs can lock up. But man, I felt good after the first leg. It was like, all right, we got second. We know we can go. Let's start. And that was the beauty of the first time through. The next morning, it was go time. And you see what happens on a back-to-back. Uh, we performed pretty well. It's, you know, we thought over yeah. the length of a, a normal race that some people may wear down, you know, and it's, we can go on fumes, Ryan and I, we're, we're good at that. And so mm-hmm. if I ever got a chance to do it again, I'd be interested to do it a normal way. And I don't know what, you know, I'm interested to see season 34, how they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Now, would you, would you have someone else in mind to do it with, or would you go back and do it with Ryan? There is, Ryan is my A1 from day one, man. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I would love to do it with my wife. We'd probably kill each other, <laughs> but <laughs> it, I think she would be a, a great competitor. But man, Ryan and I, we have unfinished business. Um, hmm. This isn't a shameless plug. I've told every interview, if I get the chance to go back, when we win, not if we win, my half of the money goes to a charity. If, like, Elise can choose it. Bertram can choose it. Phil can choose it. Society can choose it. Um, yeah have to win one ryan has to win one we have to win one and we know we can i mean we know mm-hmm. we can if i didn't think we could i wouldn't go back and leave my son for another month but yeah it's burning <laughs> you're ready <laughs> have you thought about sending in another audition anytime soon or are you gonna like wait a few years or something like you that know, i don't really know how the process works after you've been on it once you know there's all the rumblings grumblings of unfinished business seasons all stars and yeah. things like that and, you know maybe mm-hmm. it's you know i I'm here, CBS, if you need me, and so is Ryan. Um, but, you know, if we ever got the opportunity to do it, I think it'd be really cool to compete against other people that have done it prior to really see where we stack yeah. up. Yeah, kind of like a winner a winner season or... Yeah, and I, yeah. Uh, I feel very confident that Ryan and I could get it done. Um, yeah. We can go. All right, yeah. So, um, you play second. And look at that, another team running in right Woo! now. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> first leg you ended up placing first in the second leg let's go hey guys hello 
Welcome to a double decker bus here in London. You had a good day? We had Pretty a great good. day. So to the good. bone, but it was a hell of a ride. How did that feel, Phil, telling you your team number one? Well, it felt really good until he told us that we had to keep going. <laughs> do you have any idea where you're placed right now? We think we're first. You do? We feel very confident in that. We yeah. believe so. Yeah. Okay. You are team number one. Woo! All day, baby. And so <laughs> that's something that they kind of had to edit with the first episode being the first two legs in London. Technically, we did continue, um, but it let us know, hey, we got second. And then how we got first, man, this is two legs and we're performing extremely well. Um, mm -hmm. I don't ever want to say that we got confident or too cocky in it because, you know, we do both realize that at some point something is going to punch us in the face. But I mean, we were yeah. flying high. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't think, you know, I, that's when mm -hmm. I truly knew, OK, man, we've kind of done a little bit of everything here. We've gotten through it pretty good. We haven't killed each other. Um, communication's good. I was like, as long as that stayed well, I knew that we would be fine. Mm -hmm. now mentally how are you feeling like you've been away family everyone was basically gone out of your life for that for the first what month type thing how are, how are you feeling like and you have no no access to phones anything no communication nothing and so you know the first three legs prior to covid it was so fast we were technically there for like 10 days i believe um mm -hmm. or gone for 10 days mm -hmm. Um, at this point, I didn't have a son. And so, you know, it's not that I don't miss my wife and my dogs and things like that, but it's a little easier when you don't have a child at home. And so, you know, the whirlwind of coming back, it's crazy. I'm like, I'm just running around the world and we get home a day before the world shuts down. So, you know, you're go on TV running around the planet and then you're locked in your house for two weeks. Yeah. So that was very interesting. Um, then the second time you come back through though, it's, I don't know, it's just a different thing. Like, the nerves were kind of gone. Um, it was just, all right, now it's, we're here to perform. Um, I think Ryan and I came back the second time. Both of us were in better shape than the first time. Um, mm -hmm. We put the work in hardcore. You know, we knew what kind of the weaknesses were. And so really getting back into the second run, um, you know, starting in Switzerland out with another win. And then in Scotland, I believe we finished second as well. By this point, the first leg in Switzerland, Ryan and I were like, okay, man, we may have a chance at like the best finish. Mm -hmm number ever you know I mean we're cruising and so but those thoughts can get in your head and your guts can be ripped out real quick over a pot of cheese real mm -hmm. fast <laughs> yeah so yeah. the the kilt and rebuilt um detour how do you think now after you're saying that you're dancing and stuff was it wouldn't be one of your strengths how do you think you would have done if you were to pick kilt I mean, I think Ryan and I would have gotten through it. I would never say it was going to be pretty or mm -hmm. fast. Um, when we read the clue immediately, I was like, okay, we're it's building barrels. I'm like, this is physical. Let's just go do that. Like, let's not yeah. put ourselves in an uncomfortable position to one where we look like <laughs> morons on national television. Correct. <laughs> you need to jeopardize the opportunity to get through. I mean, our mind frame always was if it's physical, we have a real good chance of either making up time or building our lead. And so- Mm -hmm. I mean, that was just a no brainer. There was no way trusers were going on dusty or Ryan. I can show you that. Uh, but watching it, I, you know, I would have liked to have had a crack at it maybe just to yeah. see. It's like a rune, you take the cake, buddy. That, that singing. I mean, I put that on replay in the mornings to scare all the cats out of the track. <laughs> <laughs> That's what exactly. Like you said it wasn't going to be pretty. I'm like, neither was theirs, but a rune stuck, a rune pushed through it and, and did it. Right. And it was, yeah unfortunately they got eliminated but it would mean crazy that they got invited back at, because of other teams who couldn't come back right absolutely they got their second chance and look how far they went afterwards right definitely yeah. definitely and they're so, super fans guys those two are super fans so for yeah. them to get the opportunity to do it again mm -hmm. you could just feel the love between the two and the energy uh a yeah. the most positive human being i've ever met in my life it's he unbelievable. was ben i think you can vouch for me he was amazing to talk to when we spoke sure. to him he really was. Yeah. Yeah. Great guy. He, yeah. So I want to talk about your, the flag, the flag dance basically. And um, that was a struggle between everyone to get that one like pad down, but and talk to me about that. So Ryan and I at this point, so it's the first leg back in Scotland and we were just like, we have to keep eyes on people. As you see right before it, we Ryan destroys the hiking challenge and we missed the damn elevator. 
So everyone catches up. Um, mm -hmm. So at this point, you know, in the back of my mind, if you watch the first episode back, who's on the bus together? The first bus. It's us. It's the Holder mm -hmm. Misses, and it's Raquel and Kayla. Yeah. This is no that, shot with exactly. anyone else, but all of us sitting on that bus had a very strong inkling that this was going to be the finale. And so the final three. Yeah. And so to be ahead with Pin and Kim, we were just like, let's keep eyes on them and whatever we need to do. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't even really read this clue. It was the first day back. We're going crazy. And so when we get there, I mean, immediately you see Ryan and I were like, oh no, dude, what are we doing? We're doing a, a dance competition basically with the king and queen of this. And so, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so once you get there for a little bit, you don't know where the other detour is at. We have no idea. We don't see it. And that was another one of our rules. If you can't see it, don't try to make a move on it. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was just, Ryan, listen, we can turn this thing into a song. So we kind of started mimicking what they were doing. Um, mm -hmm. We were just very fortunate that Penn and Kim missed the first time. And Ryan and I somehow got it right. Um, we mm -hmm. just didn't jump to the gun. We stayed patient. And I just made sure that we understood what was going on. Um, Ryan definitely wasn't a fan of this challenge, but, uh, once we get through, I mean, what a win to, you know, beat them to the punch, you know, you, confidence is an all time high after that. Uh, it just felt good because they are so good guys at everything. I mean, Penn and Kim are oh. Mount Rushmore, amazing race contestants, no yeah. questions. And so it just kind of felt good and a little chip on our shoulder to get through. I mean, I think you see the scream that comes out of me running away with the flags. <laughs> yeah. But I think all of Switzerland heard that. Um, <laughs> uh, it felt good, man. It was uh, okay. Yeah. We can do this now we did a performance challenge and we got through it and then we go on to win the leg and it's like, we're booming by now. I think from what Raquel said that if Kim and Penn ever went back to do like a, the, the winter uh, season or something like that, I, I think, and watching them on tv as well that i think they have a chance of of winning it again definitely Absolutely. yeah i mean when we all talk to you guys uh this isn't a slight to the holders at all but if you ran that finale three more times i think each one of us would win it um raquel and kayla you see it they had it they, they had yeah it in the back. It, 100%. i was sitting in between them in miami watching that you yeah. know you hear it and then you see it and if you take it ever out of it, the elevator at the last thing, we run the rest of the leg flawlessly. We get through the end. I mean, we finished 15 minutes behind the girls and we were at the elevators for an hour and 25 minutes. Correct. Yeah. And it's just, you watch that, then you really know the time. And it's just like one mistake knocks you out of a million dollars. And the thing that Penn and Kim don't do, they don't miss, you know, they they don't don't miss, but it stays in the fairway or right on the rug. They're not in the woods like us. And so, you know, hats off to them for running. That's what it took. We knew that's what it was going to take. Who was going to make the least mistakes in the last day? Mm -hmm. so. You, and this is just my opinion, but and now that you've all raced together, you all have the exact same opinions from each other. You and you and Raquel have, the, have basically said the exact same thing on both episodes. Like uh, Kim and Penn just don't mess up. Like they, they get through anything. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? So in Switzerland, you did the bartender race, which was, that was the, the chestnuts and wine running up the stairs, correct? That is it. Oh boy. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, yeah. Something, so that. yeah. Something I want to ask is your cameraman was following you the entire time up the stairs, were they? So most of the way there's camera crews that are spread up the stairs to take okay. i mean you guys are hauling 100 pounds around each correct yeah and camera people and so they did a good job with that it's not to say they couldn't these people are savages mm -hmm. man i mean the first thing we did was like you guys can't keep up with us they're like you're the 33rd person to say that to us <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? so yeah um, they split it up there and they did have a camera guy halfway up but i mean those guys are mm -hmm. They're no jokes, man. Like the, the guys and girls that do that, the production side of it is the most amazing part of it. Like what not seeing them in life. It's un unbelievable. From and that's exactly what I say. When they do drone shots or any far uh wide camera angles, you see not no one. Like the, they showed okay. drone shots of like the stairs and there was no one on the stairs. Yeah, it's incredible. You, one time, one time you see like you do see one cameraman like following one team, but you see no one like halfway, you see no extra people like it's crazy how they edit everything out all yeah. the little little best things of the best. best of the best yeah so that difficult challenge was it it was and uh you know again not difficult extremely physically demanding 
Correct. And if we did it over again, we look back on everything. We were probably ran the wine bottles up first because after two or three runs up these stairs, you are literally drenched in sweat and holding wine bottles covered in sweat is Not no good. joke. I mean, you see later in the leg, once we get through it, I collapse on the ground. I mean, my yeah. legs are locking up. I'm s- the problem is you don't want to drink water in the morning either because you want to go to the bathroom. And uh, mm-hmm. this is a shout out to Ryan. This guy goes to the bathroom before every leg, literally one minute before we start and always made it back. I would have a nervous breakdown every leg. <laughs> really? But he always made it back. I mean, I should have. Jesus. Wow. Uh, yeah, there was back three, four times, whatever, up and down those stairs. And what were there? Like, how many stairs roughly? Do you know? It was 422 steps, I believe. I have it written down in my notes. I think that was Jeez. correct. And so, yeah. yeah, we did six up and downs, three per each <laughs> thing. You, well, you can't carry that many chestnuts. I tried carrying them all and spilled them all over the highway. And so, <laughs> like, all right, go back was, to everybody. Yeah, I think it was, um, uh, who was it? I don't know, but she, she dropped a wine bottle and smashed it on the stairs, right? Sherry, yeah, yeah. Girl. <laughs> and there was it, it's 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 difficult, right? Like if it's one hard. slips and you're you're done, you got to go back and get another one, right? It's a whole other yeah. whole other like process to restart, basically. It's um, all to the wound when you're delivering wine to a party, too. Everyone's drinking, having a good time, and I'm running around like a lunatic in the most beautiful place. <laughs> <I've been>. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you ever get stopped by anyone or anything while you guys were running, or did you guys just like ignore and just keep running? I mean, there'd be a couple people here and there, and I'll be the first one to tell you it wasn't for me. <laughs> you know, people would notice Ryan quite a bit, but, or you see a cameraman chasing after two people with a sound crew and a fanny pack on, you got an idea of what's going on. Um, yeah. I'll tell you, the Holderness family gets love everywhere they were at. Uh, Mike and Mo too, like people knew them everywhere. And I feel like the twins get a lot of love as well. Um, here and there, but it was like, can't talk. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're yeah. doing the love money. Sorry. There was like, I, I think I said this the other day when I was rewatching clips. Um, you guys talking like if Arun and Natalia wanted to switch a, a a roadblock or something like that, then they they give their whole strategy idea to like on camera and stuff. I'm like, no, I would just start going. Like you're already gonna need more time. Like I'll talk to the camera afterwards. They kind of just yeah. ignore that it's there, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they so, know when to pry too when things are going south to get it out of you. I'm just like, not today, guys. Uh-uh. Yeah. So Switzerland to France, you guys didn't eat the mega cheese, did you? No, we did. We pounded it. It was delicious. Oh, really. ever? Uh, yeah. Okay. It was not good, guys. It tasted like eating onions and like horseradish or something. And it was like spicy. And then the problem is you're wearing a mask asking people for directions and this burning just funk is pouring out of your mouth into your face Mm -hmm. i mean that cheese is no joke i mean not terrible but the run up is like a mile straight uphill you're thirsty there's no water and you're eating yeah raquel said that the maggots tasted better than the cheese yeah he said cheese probably tasted like like barf basically and she would have rather ate like a spoonful of maggots than I can't believe it. Like, yeah. this is inhumane, guys. We're all going to get like parvo or something. <laughs> so, Dusty, tell me about the the challenge that involved you guys having to make cheese. Oh boy, guys, uh, this was our first big blender. Um, so, I've grown up in kitchens my whole life. I've worked in restaurants, or you know, I'm a, I own a bed and breakfast for Christ's sake, uh, and yeah. so. I read the clue, making cheese. I'm like, Ryan, I got this one in the bag. You can kick your feet up. Don't you worry about it. I've even conned Lulu and Lala, who left with us in the first group due to getting second the leg prior in Switzerland to do this as well. <laughs> and immediately we get there. And I re- I'm thinking that we're going to a place with like a stove, somewhere like normal. Mm-hmm. And we're in the woods on a Bunsen burner with a bucket on it. And so <laughs> all this confidence that is exuding me quickly mm-hmm. evaporates when we can't even start the fire to get the water boiling to cook the cheese. And so I'm not a very patient person, as the world knows. Um, yeah. and it's a very patient, tedious thing, um, and it has to be very precise. And so immediately all hell breaks loose. We, the fire's going on and off. They don't show this. I mean, we have to relight our pilot, I'd say 10 times. And I'm screaming, Hey, cave lady, come over here and relight this. The woman, that's <laughs> the cave. I don't know her name. 
And, you know, slowly but surely everyone starts trickling in. We're the first team there. Um, yeah. Lulu and Lala are having success. I see their cheese come together and I know what it's supposed to do and it's just not doing it. So I'm frantically running around like a psychopath. Ryan is at sure. with him with me. And then we see Penn and Kim walk by at the donkey challenge and it took them literally five minutes. And so at that point, you see the conversation starting to be had, should we make a move? Um, but in the amazing race, it's easier said than done. We had been 15 to 20 minutes in. The girls were just about to finish their cheese. We're like, you know, maybe this will come together. We've already put this much time into it. And we kept stirring and stirring and stirring as the girls leave, as Akbar and Sherry leave, as everyone leaves. We're sitting there catching grenades in the trenches. And then finally our cheese turns into God knows what. We try to <laughs> buy and mash it down into the tray and make it look like cheese. And they basically laughed us out. And so at that point, I'm like, Ryan, this is going to take another 30 minutes. We're already dead to rights. We're dead last. We have to make the move over. And so we're blessed, lucky. And again, this was one of our rules. The detour is right next to us. We should have made the move earlier. We went against everything that we talked about and you didn't mm -hmm. do it. But then we get over to the donkeys and we ripped through it pretty well. Um, yeah. Something that wasn't shown though, we actually untied the demo knot that holds the saddle <laughs> onto the donkey. And so let me tell you about how, just trying to refigure how this knot was. And luckily, I think I figured it out somehow. And so we got through that in literally 10 minutes. And then we know what the rest of the leg is. It's all physical. You know, it's at that point, I'm like, damn, we just blew it. We gave away the first group. You know, we're in sixth place at this point, dead to rights. I mean, everyone's like, you guys aren't coming back. There's no way. Yeah. And then we rip the clue. And I see that the whole bunch of just spelunking and jumping and crawling through water. And my boy, Ryan, has the biggest calves you've ever seen. I'm like, okay, we have a chance. And so to get there and see other teams, you have no idea uh, the feeling yeah. because we were the whole ride there. I mean, you see how emotional I get. Um, I'm like, we're going home, man. We just won two legs in a row and we are going home today. How in the hell did this happen? Mm -hmm. So thank God the race gods presented a couple of physical challenges to us because that saved us. I mean, it was, the, you know, it's our strength, it's strength. And so mm -hmm. Ryan blasted through the, you know, the caving and the water jumping and those things. I mean, he did it in literally 10 minutes. It took other people like 45. Um, he's laughing yeah. and blowing people you know, <laughs> at this point we started in six coming there and we're leaving out in fourth place right behind the red team and we know that rowing upstream is on the way and so we're like the hell would survive and we're going to try to get into second or, you know see if we can catch the girls we know we're going to be arun and natalia at this mm -hmm. uh and so we didn't get into the first group but to go from dead last and out you know i don't know how far behind we were to finish in third place, I think you see the emotion on the beach when Ryan and I uh, stormed yeah. Normandy. Uh, it got the best of me. It's, you know, I don't, I'm not a meathead. It's not like I'm trying to be an asshole about anything, but to yeah. the relief to know you're still alive and to come all the way back. I mean, I said it in the episode, it's the best leg we ran to this point. Not the best finish, but resiliency. And, you know, I don't know what kind of comebacks there's been on the Amazing Race. I've seen them all. It's got to be one of the bigger ones up there to get back yeah. in the hunt. So it was, yeah just basically crawling to the finish line just to hear what what you're placing right yeah after you I'm, guys got off of that boat yeah yeah um a lot of yelling <laughs> yeah speaking of the ryan having to go down the the river and type thing or whatever um and the clip i just watched earlier is he's just passing people he's just jogging through the thing he's like all right time to pass people let's get back in first place like you see him pass like three, four people throughout the entire thing. Right. And the thing about um, with him gone so far and you guys all the way back is you have no idea where anyone is, if they're struggling, if they're doing well. And when you just hear someone coming back, everyone gets excited and it turns out to be someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So it was um, nice to see their yeah. faces when we showed up too, because they thought we were dead to rights. You know, everyone's running by us. You hear the girls make the comment, good, you know, and it's uh, when we came storming up where Ryan was about to take off, you should have seen their faces. It was priceless. Mm -hmm. Like we're back in it, guys. We ain't going anywhere yet. <laughs> yeah. Now, something I want to talk about is the, um, the Slovakia and like with the club being on the back of the wrapper. Um, <laughs> how was that? So believe it or not, I was in, we get there and we, all right, we're like, okay, we have to eat something. No problem. Uh, and then when you get done, you realize you have to, or you have to spell it first. Excuse me. I got this backwards. 
And so yeah. Ryan is like panicking, like, well, how the hell do you spell this? And so <laughs> I had actually worked in the grocery industry. I was selling groceries for like 10 years. I have a whole bunch of Greek customers and that's what they call pork is souvlaki. And so this is written on every single order guide I ever had to look at. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, dude, I got it. And he, I get my notepad out to make sure it's right. And when I get it right, the look on his face, you know, it is priceless. And so we have to eat this damn thing, which at this point we're both starving. Mm -hmm. a whole the, probably the best meal that you guys had throughout the entire oh, man, show it was so good and so i am so fortunate that ryan ryan caught the rapper no question asked uh mm -hmm. i mean we probably been there for a little bit if it was me looking around for it i would have been <laughs> panicking, running around again um i don't know if you guys caught it either there was a huge pile of watermelons piled up next to this food cart and really? man when we pulled up i was like oh no here we go slingshot time I don't know if you know, the yeah. old episode. I mean, I'm yeah. like, please, Ryan, I hope this hits you right between the eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I know exactly I what you I mean. I could have lost that day to see a watermelon vaporize on him. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Probably one of the biggest moments in Amazing Race history. Epic. And we um, actually do it later, as we all know, uh, make the sounds for the Follies. But so, yeah, man, getting through that, it was, uh, it was felt great. Uh, I was like, okay, I brought something to the table here, but then we go to this next challenge that Ryan has to do that roadblock. I mean, I'm like, dude, you have to memorize all this. It's crazy. It's just, you never know what you're going to get punched in the face with. Oh, there was the, yeah, that was the one where you had to listen to the, the priest yeah, basically. To, yeah, yeah. And that, that was you, right? No, Ryan did that one. And if you notice, he only listened to the first half. That's what, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, we were talking, he, he runs away, whatever, gets to the questions starts hearing what the hell yeah, what is it so he goes back faster, yeah. so, so he tries whatever fails he goes back does the exact same thing again yeah. starts to leave realizes that everyone's staying he's like wait what there's another half yeah so i didn't i didn't know that either until i watched it i mean it's just, really? our thing was to if something's going sour on a roadblock and you know just keep it to yourself we what's the point of any more stress we got out of there in a decent manner yeah those pesky girls though man god got us that was our chance that was moving <laughs> that first group yeah we made a wrong turn guys we uh we, we drove past the exit to the pit stop and in the rear view mirror i saw them make the right turn and i just wanted to crash the car into a pillar <laughs> but it is what it is we, ma we made it back around greece was not very good to us guys <laughs> speaking <laughs> of yeah speaking of the girls and everything like that lulu and lala i feel so bad for them <laughs> having to eat the slovakia and like two of them right I'm two of them sure. basically right after doing the same thing throwing the wrapper out and meet a little got... thing about the girls too guys is their stomachs i mean they like they really cannot eat a lot of different things um and mm -hmm. so for them to eat the cheese and get through i mean i was terrified for them to do that but then to have to eat a souvlaki then to know they ate two of them <laughs> they're two of my our favorite people ryan and i are very very close to those two man the twins we love them i mm -hmm. mean i want a shout out to you girls the party they threw us in miami for the finale boys yeah incredible which which i do want to talk about later because I, I for some reason i haven't talked i didn't talk to that about it to anyone else but i want to go back a little bit to um after the the sh you guys coming third and like, after the stream whole thing you guys camped outside that night didn't you we did we actually camped i think for two nights uh on that like beach right there on, yeah like this big compound um Arun knew that was going to happen too early. He, I'm telling you, he's like Rain Man with amazing. <laughs> he like would tell us what he thought was going to happen. And the majority of the times it was a challenge similar to that, or this would happen. And so mm -hmm. it was a cool experience to like actually let our hair down a little bit for a day and a half, two days, and actually get to spend time with one another. Yeah. You know, most time we've really spent with each other other than on the flight to and from since it's a charter jet, but um, it was neat to like really get, and that's where, you know, Arun and Natalia, us other three teams at this point, four teams, five teams have been there, you know, together and they'd went out. And so I really feel like this was the time where I got to know both of them and became extremely close with them as well. And so a neat experience. I'm camping in, on an island off the south of France. There's wild boars running around at nighttime. I mean, it's crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy. And but amazing and much needed rest by this point. Yeah. Now, what were some of the the conversations that were being talked about? Like off camera because i know they didn't show much of that 
Yeah, it's just a lot of backstory, you know, like tell us about your family, you know, what, you know, what, you know, digging independent Kim, tell us about how you got into TV, Ryan, tell us about everything that you went through. Um, yeah, okay. It was a great time to really get to know each other. And really, I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, we kind of put the race to the side, like it wasn't a lot of conversation about that. Funny little barbs here and there. Oh, I'm going to U-turn you, you know, if it presents itself, you know, but really mm -hmm. just hanging out and taking in the experience that, you know, we earned this. We're still here, guys. We've made it this far. And so, yeah, and it was nice to just relax, eat some good food, sit out in the sun. We got to play some games. There was a river we could hang out in. And so okay, yeah, a nice reset to get ready for, you know, the final stretch. It's getting close. We know that. Mm -hmm. So Dusty, let's talk about the entire rock situation and oh, great. You, you guys <laughs> your favorite part about the whole show right changed my life yeah talk to me about just what was going through your mind when you got there so and prior, yeah yeah i mean this was uh i'll tell you the first thing i'm gonna tell you is uh ever since the day we got home i've been very concerned up to this episode just because I didn't know how I was going to be portrayed. Um, you know, I'm a new father. I've had my issues in the past, which the whole world knows now. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know what people were going to think about me crying at the end. Like I'm not a very emotional person whatsoever. And so yeah. there's been, there was a lot of fear, but a lot of relief once it aired because of the support I've gotten from everyone's been nuts. So we get to the location. It's the, we were on ring road and we end up at this, it's called the, I think the forest theater, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah be so bad <laughs> so I ripped the roadblock open and I'm like you know who will leave no stone unturned and we were staggered at this point in roadblocks I think Ryan had one or two more than me and so I was like we're in Greece this is where the Olympics and things are at I'm like this is gonna be hoisting big stones around I'm gonna go savage <laughs> let me at it and then I tear it open and I realize kind of what we're getting into and then you walk down the path and you see what you're getting into and it's a yeah. arena the Oracle of Delphi's arena in Greece where God knows what used to happen. And there's 5,000 stones from the size of a baseball to a manhole cover. Yeah. Cover this massive area. And there it is. I know immediately that I've just signed up for a needle in a haystack challenge. Mm -hmm. So going down into the pit, you know, I'm like, okay, it's me, Raquel and Kim. A room shows up probably 15 minutes behind me. And so I'm like, okay, we're all in this together now. I don't know how long anyone's been there. My strategy yeah. is do it like a slice of pizza, work out in, move over, out in, move over, out in, over. Um, in the back of my mind, I'm like, there is no way in hell that I'm going to be the last person sitting here. There's just no way it's going to be. Yeah. Here. So an hour, hour in, you hear a scream of bloody murder come out of Raquel. And I'm like, okay, we're still okay. There's three of us still. That, that's kind of, sorry, but that's kind of the relief that everyone was like, okay, so the coins are actually here, right? Yeah, I was like, hell yeah, this is, I mean, we were all literally talking about taking a penalty together. I didn't believe that they, I thought this was some sick joke and it just. Oh, the, the penalty, right? You all wanted to, yeah. I mean, literally all of us down there flipping stones are like, should we do this? Like, if we all just do it together, we'll just start together and see who wins this damn thing. Um, but all of us, that was a quick conversation. It was like, we're not going to do this. Yeah. And then Raquel finds it. So it is a bit of relief at first, but then it's a little bit of dread because now it's like, oh, I have a one in 4,999 <laughs> chance, you know, or yeah. three, Kim finds it right afterwards. And so I'm like, okay, it's a room and it's myself. These guys have been saved multiple times. There is no way in hell that the Amazing Race guys are going to do this to me. Yeah. Ah, you hear him scream. And I mean, my heart sinks, guys. It's like, <laughs> now I know I'm in here catching grenades with the devil. One, 4,997 chance. I have been yeah. through this rock garden 25 times. Everyone has a plan too. Everyone's like, well, you should have had a strategy. You always have a strategy until you get punched in the face. Quote yeah. Mike Tyson. I mean, it's, and everyone sees it. It's, you know, 30 minutes in being there by myself. The steam is starting to come out of my ears. I'm realizing that I just blew this for my team. There's no way I'm never going to find this. Mm -hmm. I'm screaming and yelling. My son's going to see this. I'm talking about quitting. And that's when Ryan said, Hey, I need you to come up here for a minute. Mm -hmm. and Can I, that, so, yeah. I, I have a question about that because they're sitting on the sidelines, not able to help you at all. No. How are, how are you guys able to talk to each other after when you decide to take a break? So I am. You kind of just like, whatever, we're just going to speak to each other type thing. He, 
he just called me up there. And so they technically can't help you. Like he can't come down into the rock pit or tell you go left, go right, do any of that. Yeah. But this was just a, you know, he realizes what's about to happen. I'm, I'm about to blow a gasket. It's gonna end, yeah. Epic, epic television is about to happen. <laughs> and so <laughs> um, Ryan, you know, he, from what he's been through, how do you not listen to a guy like that? And so, man, he brought me up there. He was like, if we're going home, let's get a view of Greece. And so guys, the view off the back of this thing, I mean, there's a picture floating where there's just a look of disgust on my face. Mm -hmm. Ryan has a shit eating grin. <laughs> um, but it just, I just took everything in with context. And, you know, we had the conversation. I was like, Ryan, man, I just can't quit in front of my kid. This yeah. is going to be a bad look, man. You know, this is just going to insinuate everything that I grew up from, how I grew up. This is exactly what happened in my life. And yeah, it ain't going to happen. He's like, get your ass back down there. Tighten your boots up. <laughs> we got all day, man. I'm here for you. And he's like, if you want to take a penalty, we'll take it. I support whatever you do, but he goes, you'll live with the consequences and something to that effect. And I was like, dude, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I took the view in, I shit you not four or five minutes in down there, kicking rocks over. Boom. There it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely unbelievable. And the feeling of finding that rock guys, you just have no idea. The <laughs> Yeah. The lady sitting there in the chair, did she leave it all or was she there the entire time you were there? The whole time. And I kept going up for her <laughs> saying, I hope you're getting overtime for this. I'm <laughs> getting overtime. I mean, yeah. I'm busted to pieces. I'm covered in blood. I wish I had my gloves still. I lost them. Like the fingers are gone. Yeah. You were and there this for is a thing too. It's like dumb and dumber. Ryan like yells down to me at some point and goes, Hey, you want some gloves? I'm like, dude, you've had gloves this whole time. <laughs> what in the hell are you talking about? Give me those. Um, yeah. so, I mean, it just puts me to my wits end. In the back of my mind, I'm like, I miss my family. My son's four months old. What, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? Is ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, we get through it. The rest of the leg is savage, too, man. It is so long. And it's just like, we're so defeated. We're not as close as TV makes it look, too. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. And so to get to the mat, um, I mean, the emotions that just came out of I me, mean, everyone saw it. Uh, I, I could barely even step on the mat and I just burst into tears. Yeah. I don't know why it's nothing like that has ever happened. I try to tell all my friends that rewatch, I go, it's 37 and a half years of therapy. It's just all the emotions and all the thoughts of my childhood, my son, just letting Ryan down, like letting everyone down, all my friends. And it just, I, it, I just felt the, or bear the burden of failure and it sucked, man. Mm -hmm. Um, and Phil does a very good job of asking the right questions to get things out of you. I mean, he's a, he's done this for 33 seasons. And so, I mean, he really yeah. navigated me through a therapy session that I didn't expect. And uh, would I ever want to do it again? No, but I tell everyone <laughs> those three and a half, four hours in that rock pit, it changed my life. Um, yeah. A lot, a lot of dirt came off the casket, uh, to say the least. It been probably many, many thoughts going through your mind during that entire time and just... And a lot of like kind of like self thinking to yourself, right? You had a lot of downtime, just yeah. to, like kind of consider, uh, just think about things and like, uh, what am I trying to say? Kind of like just push yourself to the end, just like knock him up, right? Absolutely, yeah. man. And it was, so, that was the thing. Yeah. I was like, I can't let my son to me quit, even if we lose here, so be it. Um, I'm like, and that's the thing. I'm like, man, you just knocked us out with some shit. Like this is it's luck, and that's what I say. I'm like, we just lost. I blew this. From something I can't do better. It's like, how do you do better? So it just, it was everything together, being away from, I mean, it was crushing. So I'm a little lost right now of my memory of what happened after, but you guys ended up like basically catching up, right? Like, so, and like it was kind of almost like, in, with the way the camera showed, it was almost like neck and neck between you and another team. Sure. Um, I, I just remind me of what happened. Yeah. So with the beauty of editing, um, it looked a little closer than it was with Arun and Natalia who finished third. Um, we really weren't as close as that to the end. Um, and the whole time running. So we have to run to the white tower after smashing the plates. And I'm the whole time like, Ryan, we're going home, man. This is it. I just. Oh literally... yeah. I forgot about that. That That's, that's when I, sorry. I want to ask that before we move on. Yeah, uh, that was like your relief and like just let it all out right yeah there was no way we were carrying anything when i saw crush i was like ryan we're going this way <laughs> so i mean yeah. i don't know if you guys see it we almost debacled ourselves again so there's a clue in the bottom or in the yeah. plate thank god ryan saw it i mean i'm looking around at production and they're like 
you are so lucky he saw that. I mean, we would have been there for days. Like we had, we didn't even read the clue guy. I mean, we was just like smash the room. They'll give us a clue at the end. I don't care. I just want to break things. Yeah. Uh, and so, and guys, the run from that to the White Tower had to have been two to three miles, I would say. And like, I'm beat to hell. It's miserable. But we we're just Caught. like, you gotta at least, yeah, you got to at least end respectfully. And so, yeah, I, mean, I can't say it was the most graceful mat ending ever <laughs> on the amazing race. It hmm. tore my heart out and stomped on it, but I wouldn't change anything in the world for it. I mean, multiple people asked me, I was like, no, no, it's, it did more for me. It did more good than yeah. harm. Now, a question I had is, was this talk between like where the camera angles were and stuff? is kind of where the the coins were right like weren't you guys i think you guys were all speak, talking about that right like yeah. if a camera was angling this way so it's kind of probably over there right that's what we, i thought and i believe kim thought the same thing in her um podcast that she did so there was like cameras mounted and then like some gopros in the rocks and so my immediate thought was like hey turn it over right here so they can get the money shot of you yelling no, I think it was just all there to fool you and get you in very frustrated scenes. Mm-hmm. So after your entire, you ended up placing third uh, to move on to the final episode, correct? Yep. We, and... yeah, after, after the rock incident, we fought back, got into third, punched our ticket and on to LA we go. Mm-hmm. So let's break it down in like, after that episode, what what was going through you, Ryan? What was the conversations like, especially after you having such a tough time during the Rock Challenge? You know, it's funny that, it, like, I look back on it, it, I really compartmentalized it because I was like, one, you know, this is over now. We're still going. Thank goodness there was another save. I'm like, how the hell are they going to keep doing this for us? Um, <laughs> but it was good. You know, I was mad the whole time other people were getting them. But boy, it feels good when it's you. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even really think about it, to be honest with you. It was like in the hotel room, get healthy. I'm beat to hell. I can barely walk. And so it was like, use Ryan's foam roller, Mm -hmm. flush it out. Don't even think about it. Honestly, I didn't think about it until I got home and I sat on the couch. And the first time I spoke with my wife, leave no stone unturned was the first thought I had. And I sobbed for hours. I mean, hours, (laughs) hours. like I I couldn't explain it to her. And it's just something you can't explain unless you go through it and you were there and experienced it. And so- Really, I mean, it was just, it's time to go. You know, it was a bad game. I had a bad day. It's, you know, there's no rest for the wicked. We got to get back to work. We're still in it. Um, and we're playing with house money now. Let's go. It actually took some stress off us. I feel like the next leg is like, the only way we have to go is up now. We're in dead last. So let's get this up and show them what we're about. And so yeah, going into the finale, standing up on the top of, you know, the building in LA, all Ryan and I ever wanted since losing the first group in cheese was to start with everyone Every single time we started in the front of the pack or in the first group, something good usually happened for us. Um, and so we got what we wanted. Um, we talked thoroughly. We knew that uh, there was going to be a big puzzle. We were ready for that. We just weren't ready for an elevator in the number 1025, apparently. <laughs> ben, how you uh, how you feeling? Any questions? What are you thinking? No, I'm just listening. I've never really watched Amazing Race. So it's like, you know, like, how do I pitch in? to hear <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. uh, it's you're kind of in what we've said the past few episodes filming with the other um other racers basically that it's just never would we have ever thought to speak to you guys right and like to hear your perspective of the behind the scenes seeing the entire like production like make this whole thing happen right like we never thought we would have had this opportunity to speak to you guys yeah, like awesome. and especially if ben hasn't seen the show or whatever that's kind of why I'm leading the entire thing right now. But like, um, just we've had like incredible luck basically the past few months with this whole podcast. We're very, uh, very fortunate about it. Um, so last leg, I mean, two hour episode, uh, basically two, two episodes in one, like two legs, yep. right? Uh, 10, 11, starting in LA and just what happened. So we're standing on top of there the whole time. We're like on a helipad. It's real windy and things. I'm like, man, are we getting on a helicopter? Are we jumping out something? Are we going to (laughs) walk all these towers to another tower? I'm like, Ryan, you're up, bud. If it's heights, I'm done. I'm bungee jumped. I am good, brother. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we're all standing up there. It was a delayed start due to weather. And I mean, the anxiety and waiting, like you're here, it's like, I have a one in three chance to be an amazing race champion. And at this point, it's like, screw the money. I mean, it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But like, I wanted the belt more than anything. I wanted to be a champion. Just, um, just to say that you've been on the amazing race and you won the amazing race. Absolutely. I'm one of 33 teams to be able to say this, you know, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we felt good. We were like, we got what we wanted. We're back in the, you know, the first group with everyone. I think, you know, they're probably like, shit, they're here that, you know, they made <laughs> it somehow they've weaseled yeah. through all of these things. Um, and so we felt ready. There's no excuses that we can make. We were both prepared. Um, it's just, we, when the bell went off and it was fined you. So there's four towers. You had to find, you know, three of the towers have a lock box and you have to find the code somewhere around you. And the clue said something to the effect of it will go up and down. So immediately there's mm-hmm. elevators inside, outside. We're like, it's an elevator. We mm-hmm. just broke the golden rule. Our golden, our golden rule was to be patient and wait. How this challenge really worked, you weren't allowed to look over the edge of the building. You had to wait for the outside elevators to come to high level. The codes were right on the front of the elevator. We never waited. We never stopped, took a breath. We read the clue a million times and, you know, lo and behold, I lure us inside of the building thinking it's the elevator. <laughs> yeah. We get trapped inside for like 30 minutes. You can't get back in upstairs. We don't have a key. We have to like hustle bag cleaner. It was chaos. And so we yeah. wasted 30 minutes basically sitting in the lobby. By the time we get back up, both lock boxes are busted open. You know, we know at this point, probably not going to be able to get back into this, especially with the two teams we're competing against. Mm-hmm. And then lo and behold, the elevator comes up and I look over, I'm like, Jesus, dude, it's 1025. It's right there. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, we kind of blew it at the beginning and like rewatching and then spending time at the finale with everyone. Uh, I would rather it have been this way than how Kayla and Raquel went out. Um, and really after we got through the elevators, there was a little bit of trouble navigating. LA is the craziest place I've ever driven by far harder than anywhere else we drove in the world. Yeah. Um, I- but but to the once we got to the pinatas, guys, we murdered the rest of the challenges. I mean, we ran them. I don't they know did. what the times were. I would say we did them faster than everyone after the first one. No question. They, yeah, they didn't show much of you guys after that. That thing. Yeah, it was kind of like you guys were a little far back, so like they kind of like who's gonna win? So let's show them the most, right? Sure. Because yeah. like they didn't even show. I don't think they showed anything of you guys doing the final. It was just yeah. like from what last time I saw you to you guys running through the fall, like to the finish line, right? That was it. I mean, um, guys, the last challenge, guys, we did it in like two tries. It took us like five minutes. But you, you said, so you guys still had to do it though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. like I said, guys, we finished 16 minutes behind the girls and we were, in, I mean, that's the thing that we, we would always be one of the fastest teams, even on the legs where we started in the second group, we just never made up 15 minutes. We'd make up eight minutes. You know, your time will mm-hmm. show you. Um, we just never made up the 15. And then once you watch it again, it's like, Oh, we were working against four people. Wonderful. <laughs> you know? And it's like, <laughs> but I would have stepped on anyone's throat behind me. If it was Raquel, Kayla and I and Ryan up front, I'd be like, we can't let Penn and Kim get up here. Mm-hmm. Make sure the beast they ran. I mean, it's just, I'd rather squandered at the beginning than the end, watch your guts get ripped out and yeah. walk off as they did. Um, it sucked. You know, we put so much work in, we went through so many trials and tribulations, but so did everyone else. And, you know, when you look back on it, all those things, us fighting, making it, surviving the rocks, none of it mattered because we got what we wanted and we choked. And yeah. Cut and dry. We, we went away from everything that we knew and just got ahead of ourselves before the race even started, um, honestly. And it, it sucks, man, because we worked so hard and we just, if I didn't think we could win, this wouldn't sting so bad, but you, it's not yeah. the money. And you can, you can barely say that you guys like messed up or like failed at this because placing third is incredible, right? Like Very you, made, you did every way, you did every episode, you pushed through it and look where you guys turned out, right? Even after some of your toughest challenges. Yeah. yeah. And the most important thing is I got to do with Ryan, man. You know, you lose 10 years. Of, we lost our 20s too. I mean, think about that. It's your best 10 years of your life. Yeah. And you're traveling, getting to know each other, party and having fun, making mistakes together. We didn't get to do that. So to get to experience a crazy 30 days like we did with him, I mean, it's just a cherry on the cake. And uh, I didn't think our friendship would be any better, man. But we, it's, uh, he's my brother now, not just my friend. Um, I was blessed. He was just here in Colorado. We did some snowboarding. And so we got to reminisce a little bit and nice. lick our wounds. Uh, yeah. So what was it? 
what was the relief after running like after finishing everything and running through uh through the finish line so i wouldn't say relief the whole last leg i think all of us were like we're ready for this to be over you know you're away from your family you're living in very crazy circumstances and hotels running hotels running um but the second it ended all I wanted to do was go back to a hotel and start tomorrow again. It was very strange and very sombering. And it was, it was like three years of my life. had just ended or two and a half years, you know, a 19 month oh, yeah. the time prior to it. And it was like, this has been such a big part of my life. And I really didn't want to leave the people, you know, and at the finale, you get to see everyone, they bring everyone back and it's, you do something like this with someone and it's like, you become a family. And I know all seasons do that, but we're a little bit more unprecedented than anyone with having 19 months in between finishing this thing. We all became extremely close. And so to see everyone one last time and then that next morning to leave, I mean, it, it was it was sad, man. I mean, it was just like, mm-hmm. we had it, man. We did all this, but again, we made it to the end. We got to see everything and that was our main goal. I mean, we wanted to win. We felt like we could win but it let's enjoy each other's company and get to see every bit of this thing. Um, I took away some best friends, some family members um, and some hellacious memories. And I hope that we did enough to where people are like, man, we want to see those two guys come back. I mean, we're adamant. We want another crack at this. Uh, yeah. I think we, we, we do well. And I think, I think we earned it. I think we did. We ran a hell of a 100%. leg. If I could have Kim and Penn back on there and Raquel and Kayla, I'd love that too. Um, I want to give them the business. I'm telling you, I want to get them both so bad. I love this. Yeah. So I'm like, I just need to know if I can beat you. <laughs> you guys going to come together and like do some, some type of thing, like off the amazing race, like just together. And we have some cool things planned all of us. There's a, so I'm doing an Ironman in June in Switzerland in Lugano, where we were at on the show. I was like, mm-hmm. Lugano has been good to me. Let's go try this out. And so I think there's a good chance. We're all going to go hang out there, relive some of the, the memories, make some family members, do some bungee jumping. Um, <laughs> but we have big plans to do things. And Kayla and I will continue doing our podcast once she's good. done traveling. Um, yeah. It's, it's not the end of Dusty and Ryan by any means. I think we're going to, we'll get another shot and we're going to make everyone proud and uh, get it done this time. I don't want to be the animals and just keep getting fourth and third, fourth. No, 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 no. You're going to win. Hanging them up. (laughs) So Dusty, that was kind of like the entire amazing race talk. Now it's, let's kind of jump into like post amazing race and you guys had your after party and geez, if it wasn't for COVID, I would have wanted to go. (laughs) I was like, is there, and I'm, I'm talking to my family. I'm like, is there any way I can travel to the States right now? Like that is the one place I wanted to go and just like kind of just go see it. Right. Talk to me about your after party and your watch party. I, uh, I got to give a shout out again to Lulu and Lala and then CSE, um, celebrity sports entertainment. Yeah. They came together with, I believe iHeartRadio radio, um, and the Lulu and Lala and the girls, mm-hmm. it was at the hard rock in Miami. It was just bananas, top notch, absolutely unbelievable and so the first night we had two days there um, was the finale a whole red carpet experience yeah crazy camera booths uh bottle service uh, just top notch um mm-hmm. we able to experience the last episode um one pin and kim were sitting right behind me with their whole family who had no idea what was yeah. about to happen. and i was sitting in between raquel and kayla to watch the finale and you know i know they're at the end you know hearing them talk about hey we had it and it slipped through our fingers to watch it in person and to see it happen in between them. Um, I just love all these people so much. And there always has to be a winner and loser, but it just like sucked the life out of them. I felt so bad because they had it. Um, but other than that, you know, I look back and I get to see Penn and Kim's whole family um, cheer. Hey, I got to guys, I got to get out of this thing. Shit. I'm getting kicked out of this room. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so the after party was absolutely amazing um, and see Penn and Kim win and experience that with their families and the cheers that happened was just second to none. And then um, we also got to have an amazing pool party the next day, which was hosted again by Lulu Lala and CSE and it was just top notch and uh, to, to get to spend two days with everyone, really take it in and put a bow on the experience we just went through. It was, I mean, just an absolute amazing experience. Um and I look forward to having a reunion party with everyone next year. We're already talking about how yeah. we're going to do this again and annually get together. Good. That sounds, sounds amazing. Like it, it looked from what the photos from everyone was posting it. It looked like it was one of the coolest things that you guys could have done after the show, right? Like yeah, everyone was there experiencing 
the the finale episode like all together all the family members like and something we didn't talk about much is the fact that you guys had to go home for night uh not 18 19 months or whatever and keep everything a secret and and i feel like it would be harder for kim and pen to keep it a secret from their mm-hmm. kids than it would be for like you guys right like and then they said something on their podcast and in general with that like they were more focused on their kids reaction guys i gotta go she is like pounding the door that's all right all right Shit, um, God, I'm so sorry do you want me to like i can link up with you and wrap this up I, tomorrow i could do it um she's very out of it good hey, no worries uh yeah i'll send you over a text yeah um, let's do that and then uh we'll get together and i can wrap it up with you i should be pretty available tomorrow so i appreciate yeah. you guys very much man we'll hey, get this thank you up. yeah all right, see I'm working in the afternoon tomorrow, so. <laughs> okay, I'll, ra- I'll wrap it up with you, Dusty, just the last few. Yeah. All right, brother. All right, yeah. take care. So, Dusty, our whole goal of this podcast is um, to inspire others to follow their dreams by demonstrating what our guests and ourselves are doing in life. Now, do you have any advice that you would give to someone who is either looking to be on a reality show or just has a dream in general that they want to chase? You know, uh, I'm a big proponent of you have to just take advantage of opportunity. Um, I feel like a lot of people let any opportunity slip through their fingers. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that is my motto in life. Uh, I live by the creed, self-made, and it's all about capitalizing. And so to get on the amazing race, I mean, it's, it's luck, a lot of it, let's be honest. I mean, thousands upon thousands of people auditioned for it I was fortunate enough to get the opportunity to do it with a friend of mine that was presented the opportunity and again it's just the best thing I can say to anyone trying to do anything is just when opportunity presents itself you have to capitalize and not be scared of what the consequences are um life's too short man it's not something you want to look back on and say I should have done it and I didn't um but if you really want to get on the amazing race, um, I'll give a shout out to Lulu and Lala. They did an interview with Jesse Tannebaum. You can find that on YouTube. I think that would direct people in the right way of what videos need to be and what they're looking for. That would help with that. But I mean, my main thing is just always capitalize on anything, whatever it may be. If it's put in front of me, I'm going to try to take advantage of it. If it benefits me, for sure. I mean, the key word is basically just trying, right? Like you never know what's going to happen if you send an audition or even for any other dream that you have, just try to pursue it and see where it leads you, right? Um, now, talk to me about yourself. I know you and Kayla have your podcast. How did that like start? And is it, are you guys going to go farther with that? Or was it kind of just the amazing race um, talk or, or what's going on with that? So Kayla and I competed on season 33 of the amazing race. Um, we both had visions of doing podcasts. My partner, Ryan, is tied down with a million things he's uh just started his real estate career and he's very very into his podcast um prison counts which you know that's a bigger voice than anything that i'm trying to do um and so it really eliminated him from doing something with me though we have some things up our sleeves um and then raquel has just gotten married she's pregnant there's just a lot going on and so kayla and i wanted to share our stories we became extremely close on the amazing race and so we're like you know I don't think anyone's ever done this where it's a, an honest view of two different teams competing against each other. And um, it just made sense for us too, because we both knew before all of you that we made it to the end. And so it was a very cool way mm-hmm. to kind of elaborate on our experiences, um, see what we didn't see behind closed doors, all the shit talking and uh, madness that the amazing race ensues. And so, I mean, it was such an honor to do it with Kayla because they're such amazing competitors, her and Raquel both. And um, yes, Kayla and I have a bunch of things um, coming in the near future. I'm, I'm waiting her, for her to get back from traveling, enjoying life after the race, decompressing, mm-hmm. and then um, stay tuned. There's some good things coming. <laughs> Sounds good. And now what about yourself? Um, like outside, do you get recognized by people? Do you have fans coming up to you? And like kind of where did your life lead into after this? You know, it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind since, especially since the seasons ended. Um, it was kind of a feeling of closure in a sad way. You know, the last season or episode airs of season thirty three, and it's like, well, next Wednesday, this isn't going to show. <laughs> um, I live in a very small mountain community, and you know, a lot of people here, I believe, are very outdoorsy, and there's not a lot of people that watch TV. But I get a fair share of people that are, hey. Team Rusty, how you doing? Um, Mm -hmm. And it's always such a cool feeling for people to, you know, come up to me and say that and, uh, you know, think it was cool that we ran the race. Um, 
when Ryan's around though, he was actually just here a couple of days ago. When him and I are together, it's more him than me. Um, we're noticed a lot more. Um, but mm -hmm. other than that, man, I'm just super busy with the bed and breakfast. Um, I run a team on an in with an insurance company, Aflac. So I'm extremely busy with that. I have a 13 month old son that I'm dealing with and I'm training nonstop for Ironman Switzerland, which is coming up in June and owed to the amazing race in Lugano. I'm going to go back to where uh, things went well for us. So <laughs> life's crazy, man. Um, yeah. Just trying to stay busy, keep myself entertained and I'm waiting for the next opportunity for something nuts to present itself. No, yeah, so now was there anything else that you wanted to talk about? No, um, you know, let me give a shout out to a couple of my sponsors uh, for Iron Man. Just while I'm on it, um, NutriShop, I appreciate you so much. Uh, they have met all of my nutritional needs for everything that I've needed, and it's been great partnering with them. Um, shout out to Kayla, I love a girl. Uh, I can't wait to get back to doing Pit Stop Podcast. I hope everyone will follow us on YouTube, 100%. Pit Stop Podcast with Dusty and Kayla. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Dusty Harris O three. Um, just stay tuned for some other things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with Iron Man coming, I have some some things up my sleeve as well that I'm working on. Um, and I definitely just want to give one last shout out to Ryan Ferguson, man. You're my brother from another mother. There's no one else in the world that I would want to do this with. And I'm just so blessed that you picked me to run the world with you. Um, I know we got the bronze, but when the next time presents itself, uh, we're going to take home the belt. There's no two ways about it. Can bet that yeah. world. I hope you guys want to see us again. 100%. And now speaking of Ryan, I ended up watching um, that documentary on Netflix last night. And man, was that a crazy, uh, crazy situation that happened? Um, yeah, so everything is linked in the description by from you, Ryan, everything. Um, and I hope you had uh, an amazing time here. And we just thank you for coming on. Man, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you for uh, chatting with me. Thank you. All right, guys, we will see you guys in the next episode. Take care. See you guys.